Okay, now that we know how to do prime factorization, let's look into simplifying or reducing fractions. Simplifying and reducing are two words for the same thing. So all fractions can be written in many different forms. So take, for example, 50 cents. This is something that we all can relate to. So we got all these different coins, and I can make 50 cents out of any coin that we have. So I can say if I have two quarters, that's 50 cents. Well, how many quarters does it take to make a dollar? It takes four. So two quarters represents two-fourths of a dollar. If I have dimes, 50 cents is five dimes. Well, how many dimes does it take to make a dollar? It takes ten, so five dimes represents five-tenths of a dollar. What about nickels? Well, ten nickels make fifty cents, but it takes twenty nickels to make the whole dollar. So ten-twentieths is my fraction. But notice each of these represents fifty cents, so they're all the same amount of stuff. Fifty pennies. Well, it takes a hundred pennies to make a dollar. So 50 hundredths, or one half dollar piece. It would take two of those to make a dollar, so one half. So each of these fractions represents the same amount of money, so they're all worth the same thing. How can that be? Well, it's because if I change the size of the pieces, and I also change the number of pieces the same way, then we can represent this fraction in lots of different ways and if we had more coins we could do lots more ways to represent it however this one is special one half is special because notice that nothing will go into both of these numbers on this one 10 will go into both of these numbers and so would 5 and so would 50 and on this one uh, 10 will go into both of these numbers 5 will go into both of these numbers 2 will go into both of these numbers. So all of these fractions could be simplified. This one cannot because uh, nothing will go into both of those. So this one is considered simplified. So let's look at each one of these fractions individually. If we start with 2 fourths, I can factor the top into 2 times 1 and the reason I'm going to want the 1 is because in a minute I'm going to get rid of the 2. So you'll see in just a second. In the bottom, I can write that as 2 times 2. So the goal is I want to try to get the same number in the top as I have in the bottom. Because any number divided by itself is 1. So basically, these two 2's cancel each other out. And all that's left is 1 half. So the simplified fraction is 1 half. Now let's do the same thing with 5 tenths. I can write the top as 5 times 1. The bottom is 5 times 2. I have 5 divided by 5, so those 5's are going to cancel each other out. And what we have left is 1 half. Let's do the same thing with 10 twentieths. I can write the top as 10 times 1. Write the bottom as 10 times 2. And what we have... we what we have in top and bottom is 10, so I can cancel out the 10s, and what we have left is 1 over 2. Now, notice that if I had done the top as 5 times 2 and the bottom is 5 times 4, I could have canceled out the 5s. I still would have had to finish simplifying the 2 over 4. So there are different ways to simplify fractions, but you always get to the same answer in the end. And this one is 50 over 100. So I write the top as 50 times 1, write the bottom as 50 times 2, and cancel out the 50s, and what's left is 1 half. And I just want to show you in a little more detail. Let's do 10 twentieths a different way. Because we said we could write 10 as 5 times 2, 20 is 5 times 4. The goal again is to try to get the same factor in the top as in the bottom. And notice, I didn't go all the way to the prime numbers. You don't always have to, uh, although you can if you want to. So I'm going to cancel out the 5 over 5. And now I'm left with 2 fourths. So, of course, I noticed that 2 and 4 can both be divided by the same number. So I'm going to factor those. 
and cancel out the twos. And my end goal is to get to a number where the top and the bottom cannot both be divided by the same thing. Whether those numbers are prime or not, it doesn't matter as long as they can't both be divided by the same number. So let's look at some more examples. Okay, we're going to simplify each of the following. So here is several, here are several examples for us. And let's start with 6 fourteenths. So your goal is to factor them each to either all the way to prime numbers or at least until you see something you can cross out. So in this case, the top could be written as 2 times 3. The bottom could be written as 2 times 7. I see a 2 in the top and the bottom. The 2's will cross out. And we're left with 3 7 So 6 14 simplifies to 3 7 Okay, on 15 over 75, 15 is 3 times 5. 75 is 3 times 25. And so now I can cross out the 3's. And notice that 25 can be written as 5 times 5. So I have to do that as well. So now I'm going to cross out the 5's. And so I end up with 1 fifth. So 25 over 11 is improper, but it cannot be reduced. It's okay to leave it improper. But if even if I write 25 as 5 times 5, I can't do that to the bottom, to the 11. So there's no sense in breaking down the 25 if it won't help me cancel anything. So we'll just say that this one won't reduce. Let's look at 11 over 33. The top is 11 times 1. The bottom is 3 times 11. So since I have an 11 in the top and the bottom, I'll cancel those out and we'll have left 1 third. Let's look at 10 over 15. Both of these can be written as something times 5. So we'll write the top as 2 times 5 and the bottom as 3 times 5 and we'll cross out the 5's. And notice that we have left 2 over 3. Okay, 42 over 24. Both of these can be written as 6 times something. So notice that even though 4 is not prime and 6 is not prime, I'm not going to go ahead and break those all the way down because it really doesn't help unless I can cancel something out. So 6 over 6 will cancel out and I'm left with 7 over 4. There's no use in breaking the 4 down into 2 times 2 because I won't be able to cancel either of the 2. So it's going to stay like this no matter what. And I do not have to change it to a mixed number because the instructions only said simplify. It did not say convert it to a mixed number. Okay, looking at 20, I uh, could make 20 into 5 times 4. I can make 45 into 9 times 5. And then notice that I have a pair of 5's that can cancel out. So that's going to leave us with 4 times 9. And you may be wondering, well, how do you know that the top should be 5 times 4? Why not use 10 times 2? Well, you can use 10 times 2, but then notice your denominator is going to be 9 times 5. So the 10 times 2 doesn't help. You're going to have to go ahead and break down the 10, and then you'll get a 5 you can cancel. But the goal, again, is always to try to get the same number in the top and the bottom. All right, 42 over 35, let's make this into 7 times 6, and the bottom into 7 times 5. Of course, the 7s will cancel, and we'll be left with 6 over 5, which is improper, but we're not going to convert it to a mixed number.